Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the waffle stitch double thick hot pad and pot holder. It will protect your table, it'll protect your hands, and it's super thick. And it's also super cute. Isn't this cute? It looks like a big waffle. Like you could pop that right in your toaster. <laughs> now I chose to use some fall colors because of course we're heading into fall season. But you could do this in any colors that you want. You could make it in colors to match your kitchen. Now it measures about eight by eight. It's about an eight by eight inch square. But if you wanted to make it bigger, you certainly could just by making it wider and making it, you know, more stitches, you certainly could. But I just really love this size. I think it's perfect for putting on a pan or a casserole. And if you have one of those big casseroles, you could make two of them to set underneath. Now, I made it double thick. It has two squares that we stitched together, so it's double thick. But if you wanted to just do it single thick, you certainly could. It would still work for a nice pot holder. It wouldn't protect your table as much or your hands as much as the double thick one will. Now, I love it, and I think you're really going to have fun making it. It's, it's one of those patterns that's super fun to make. That waffle stitch. <laughs> All right, so you can find the free pattern on my blog. It has lots of pictures and lots of notes. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So to make our waffle stitch hot pad or pot holder, we're going to be using peaches and cream cotton. This is our original cotton. It is called Oasis and it's 100% cotton. Now I decided I wanted to use this for the trim. Um, and this is called Auburn Clay. It's by Crafter Secret from Hobby Lobby. And you're going to need about an ounce. We're just going to single crochet around to uh, attach the two together and then make a little loop so you can hang it up if you want to. All right. So you need about three ounces of peaches and cream, 100% cotton, medium weight, number four yarn, and about an ounce of whatever you want to use for your trim. You can do it the same color as your hot pad or you can do it different like I'm going to. I just wanted to add a little pop of color, make it look a little bit more fallish. I really like this yarn. It has these little pops of rust and brown and green and I think it looks really good with this yarn. All right, now we're going to stitch with our H hook which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook and then all you need after that is your needle and a pair of scissors. We're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to loosely chain 28 chains. And I say loosely because we don't want the chain to be too tight because if it is, it will end up not being a nice flat square. All right. So we're going to loosely chain 28 chains. I have loosely chained 28 chains and what we're going to do is we're going to place a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. We don't count the loop on our hook. One, two, three, four. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. Now this chain three at the beginning that we skipped will count as our first double crochet and then we stitched one more. All right, and so we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of our chains, working all the way across. One double crochet in each of our chains working all the way across our row. Now you'll notice that this is laying nice and flat. If you change your chain too tight, 
it's probably going to look like your stitches are puckering out or pushing out. You want to make sure that it lays nice and flat. All right. Now we started in the fourth chain from the hook and we count that chain three as our first double crochet. So we have 26 double crochets. All right. So we're going to chain three. We've chained three. We're going to turn our work. The chain three counts as our first double crochet and we're going to place a double crochet in the next stitch. Now the next stitch we're going to place a front post double crochet. So we yarn over, we're going to go around the post of the stitch and stitch our double crochet. All right, now we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two. All right, now we're going to stitch a front post in the next double crochet. Okay, so this is our repeat moving across. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the next two stitches one and two and then a front post double crochet in the next and then double crochet in the next two all right so we're alternating i'm going to turn that so you can see those front post stitches we're alternating two double crochets front post two double crochets, front post, two double crochets, front post, ending with two double crochets all the way across our row. I have completed row two. I'm going to tilt it up a little so you can see those front post stitches. All right, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight front post stitches, and then two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen regular double crochets, which of course equals twenty-six stitches. All right, so now we're going to chain three and turn our work. Okay, now this back side is a little more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch a front post in the next stitch. Our chain three counts is that first stitch. And so we're gonna do a front post in that next stitch. And then the next stitch, we're going to do a back post double crochet. So we're gonna to go to the back of our work which was our front post on the previous row and stitch around that post all right now the next two stitches which were regular double crochets on the front on the back we're going to stitch them as front post double crochets so we'll go around those two double crochet posts All right. All right, let's look at the front. Here's our front post. We stitched our back post in, and then we stitched two front posts in those regular double crochets. It can, you can see it forms a little bit of a bar there. All right, let's do a couple more. We're going to do a back post around the next front post. And then we're going to stitch a front post around those next two double crochets. All right, back post double crochet around that front post from the previous row. All right. And then two front posts around those next two regular double crochets from the previous row. All right, and that's going to be the repeat across. Back post, two front post, back post, two front post. This is how it looks on the back. 
and this is how it looks on the front all right of course this is upside down let's turn it around all right and so we'll just continue working across stitching a back post around the front post of the previous row and two front posts around those regular double crochets from the previous rows back post two front posts alternating working all the way across so i have completed row three this is how it looks on the back those two front posts with the back posts in between and you're going to end with two front posts all right that's the back of our work one two three chains and we'll turn it over and on the front of our work you can see that it looks like there's a little bit of a bar there and that's because we worked in the back post and it leaves a little bit of a edge or ledge and that's exactly what we want it to look like all right so now we're going to do row four so we're going to double crochet in the next double crochet because again our chain three counts is our first now we're going to front post around stitching a front post double crochet in the front post double crochet so basically we're repeating what we did on row two one double crochet in the next two and a front post double crochet around the next which is a front post double crochet one double crochet in the next two and front post double crochet in the next one double crochet in the next two stitches and front post double crochet around the next and we'll repeat this across two regular front post in the next two regular front post in the next two regular all the way across this row and I think you can already see that it's going to make a waffle stitch looks like your breakfast waffle <laughs> I have completed row four you can see we have our front post stitches all lined up together and then we have this ridge that's going across all right so chain three now we're always going to have one two three four five six seven eight front posts and when we turn it over it's back posts and then we're always going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 double crochets. And then when we turn it over, it's 14 front post double crochets. All right. And that's what we're going to do. We've chained three. We're going to turn it over and we're going to be working from the back. All right. So we're going to stitch a front post around the next stitch because that first one just counts as our first stitch. Now we're going to stitch a back post double crochet around that front post from the previous row and then two front post double crochets around those regular double crochets. And so what we're doing for row five is we're just repeating what we did on row three. And it's a little bit complicated at first but it's not hard it's just really watching what you're doing and being aware of where you're putting those stitches okay so we're just alternating two front posts and a back post two front post and a back post two front post and a back post of course all double crochet stitches all right and then we'll just repeat this working across our row so i have completed row five and you can see those rows there of our front posts with our indentions or indentations there where we did our back post stitches this is the back of our work now we'll turn it over and this is the front 
and now you can really see how that looks like a waffle. <laughs> All right, let's do one more on the front together. We're going to double crochet in the next double crochet and then front post double crochet around that front post double crochet. Double crochet in the next two and front post double crochet around that front post double crochet and repeat all the way across. Can you see those little squares like on a waffle? <laughs> all right, so we'll just repeat this across just like we did down here. So I have completed row six and those squares just really pop out where you can see them. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to repeat row five and row six for eight more rows, alternating every other row. And that'll get you up through row 14. And that'll give us a nice square. And then you're gonna need to make two of those squares. All right, so we're going to continue to repeat row five and row six for eight more rows. I have completed those additional eight rows, alternating rows five and six, and that got me up to row 14. And you can really see those rows pop out where you can see that it looks like a waffle. And that's where it gets its name, Waffle Stitch. So I've cut my yarn, I'm going to go ahead and tie that off, and I'll take a minute and weave in these two ends. And then I need to make a second one so that I have two that I can put together for a nice thick hot pad. So I have two squares that I have tidied up. The backs are all weaved in. And so I'm going to take them and put them together with the right sides facing out. So I've got my waffle stitch on this side and my waffle stitch on this side and those insides are facing each other. All right, so we're gonna start over here on this corner, and we're gonna go right in that first stitch, and we're gonna grab that yarn. Now, if you want to do yours the same color, you can. I just wanted to change mine up and make it a different color just to give it a little pop of color in there. Now stitching across the top is going to be pretty easy because we have those stitches to stitch in. And so we'll just place a stitch on each side going through and we're stitching single crochets. So that will be nice and easy going across the top of our project, all right? So we'll just move right across stitching a single crochet in each of those stitches, stitching the front and back together. And this makes a really nice thick hot pad and pot holder and even decoration. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just going to work across, stitching the, across the top, going through those stitches, stitching the top across the front and back together. I've stitched across, stitching the front and back together. I'm in this corner, so I'm going to stitch three single crochets. There's one, two, and three. And that's just gonna help it go around that corner nice and smoothly. Now we're going to stitch down the side. We don't really have stitches to stitch in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to stitch in the sides of those stitches as neatly as we can. Now, there's not a set number of stitches. You just wanna to try to keep it lined up and looking pretty. You wanna try not to go through the holes, try to, whoops, try to go through the sides of the stitches so that they lay nice and pretty. 
Okay, and you want to try to keep it lined up on the front and the back so that when you get to the bottom, you have the same amount of stitches and it all lines up. It can be a little bit tricky, but you can do it. It's not that hard. You just have to take your time a little bit. And you do want to stitch them a little bit snug because you want that to stay put. You don't want that to be droopy on your stitches. Okay? So I'm just going to move on down here, working to the bottom, to that next corner. Evenly single crocheting down the side, stitching the front and the back together. So I evenly stitched down that second side. I've placed three single crochets in the corner, and now I'm going to go across the bottom. I'll place three single crochets in this corner, and I'll come back up the side, three single crochets in this last corner, and then join to my first single crochet. And I really love this rust pop of color on here. I have stitched all the way around as evenly as I can placing three single crochets in each of the corners. And I think it looks really pretty. I really love it. So now we're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch. And if you don't want a loop on it to hang it up, you just want to use it like a trivet, totally fine. But I like to have a loop on mine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to chain 16 chains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. All right, so now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to join in that previous single crochet with a slip stitch. All right, and then chain one. I'm going to turn this again and now I'm just going to stitch around this chain and I'm going to stitch 18 single crochets. There's two. A little bit clumsy but worth it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, whoops, <laughs> there we go, fourteen, 15, 16, 17, and 18. All right, so I'm going to join right to that single crochet where I started and cut. Now, there is kind of a gap in there if you don't like that. You can always go behind, let me pull that string, there we go. You can always go behind and when you're weaving in, make that closer and I'll show you how to do that. Alrighty, so this is the front and so we wanna pull these to the back. Okay, and so what you would do is you'd come back here and you'd go through this single crochet and this one and just make a couple of loops and that will bring those two closer together if you don't like that they're too far apart. Adding all those uh, single crochets in there sometimes can do that. And so I just do that, pull it together, and now I'm just going to weave in this end and then I'll weave in this end as well. And so now my waffle stitch, double thick, <laughs> pop 
pot holder and hot pad is complete. It makes a really nice, thick, thick hot pad. It's going to protect your table, it's going to protect your hands, and it's going to be beautiful.